If you want, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me sharing with you my top five favorite book that I have read for the spring, so during March, April, and May. It's kind of a fun way to just review back everything that I've read during those three months and then just talk about my favorite ones. So I'm going to go quickly through all the 32 books that I've read in the last three months. So let's start with March. In March, I have read... The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson. This is the second book in the Remnant Chronicles. A Conjuring of Light by V. E. Schwab. This is the third book in the Shade of Magic trilogy. The First Fifteen Lives of Airy August by Claire North. Snapshot by Brendan Sanderson. Mitosis by Brendan Sanderson. This is a novella in the Reckoners trilogy. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chamber. This is the first book in the Wayfarer series. Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Migochi and Dichi. And 1984 by George Orwell. In April, I have read Elantris by Brendan Sanderson. Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander, aka J.K. Rowling. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Jim Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I Am Legend by Richard Matson. Truth Witch by Susan Denard. Let's Pretend This Never Happened by Jenny Lawson. Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Saga Volume 1. And Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari. And then in May, Replay by Ken Grimwood, Schizo by Nick Sheff, Vampire Academy by Richelle Mead, Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty, World War Z by Max Brooks, The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson, this is the third book in the Remnant Chronicles, The Selection, The Elite, and The One by Kara Cass. I don't even want to talk about this. And finally, I, Robot by Isaac Asimov. Now the question is, from these three piles of books, which books are my favorite ones. Last time I did this, I had a rough time actually finding even five that I liked, which, I mean, let's not even talk about this. <laughs> I'll link the video down below if you haven't seen it. But this time I have a couple that I really loved, but I'm still having a hard time to find like five that I like loved enough that I would rave like constantly about. But there's a few special mentions. They're not in any order, by the way. So number one is actually two books, but they're from the same series. So I didn't want to count them each one, you know. Basically, The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. This is the second book and then the third book in that series, and I'm constantly raving about it, and I'm not gonna stop because I'm usually not a fan of romance, like, at all. And this is definitely a fantasy world with, like, I mean, every romance is probably a bit too much to say, but there's a ton of, like, political intrigue, and it's very, very interesting. If you have no idea what this series is about, I highly recommend it. You're following a princess. The day of her wedding, she just runs away, and then there's two guys that go after her. There's an assassin sent to kill her, and then there's a prince that she was supposed to marry, and you don't know who is who throughout the first book, and it was great. I loved it. There's definitely a love triangle, but it's not the annoying, like, usual love triangle of, like, oh, do I choose hot guy number one, or do I choose hot guy number two? There's definitely a lot more uh, to it. There's three different kingdoms and there's basically a war coming and then happening. I think you should give it a shot if that's something that uh, seems interesting to you. I actually don't even have the first book to show you. I'll show you the picture right there. A Kiss of Deception because I let someone read it, so. Next book is Elantris by Brendan Sanderson. I feel like he writes so many books that I adore. He's just so good at world building. Every single one of his books in different world are so different. The magical power is completely different. You could think it's like two different author. You know how some authors always constantly write in the same universe, which can be good, obviously, but they're all so different. Every time I'm just, my mind is just blown. And this is no exception in this book. I feel like it's better if you don't know too much in this one because the magic system is nice to just discover. And this one used to be a standalone, but there's gonna be two other books added. So it's also great because you can read it on its own, which it's great when that happens. I hate like when there's always a cliff cliffhanger and you have to wait like two years to get the next book. Not the case with this one. But to give you a little bit of a vague uh, idea what it's about, it's basically there was used to be a big city that was like basically ruled by gods, but then something happens, they get sick and then they tend to, they just starting dying out and everyone is wondering what's happening. And once in a while, one person would become one of those people that were just basically silver. But then now these people, whenever they get that, they get sick and then they are sent to that city to just die. Which sounds a little creepy, but 
I'm telling you, it's fantastic. There is a romance, but the book is definitely not romance heavy, like at all. And again, a lot of political intrigue. There's a different city that is trying to take control over other ones. And I'm describing this wrong, but basically it's Brendan Sanderson. You can't go wrong. I'm actually surprised because a lot of my favorites are YA and I tend to read 50-50 YA and then adult. But I feel like sometimes books can be overhyped on booktube. I end up reading them and I'm like, meh, or just not liking them at all. But this one was 100% worth the hype. And it is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. And don't be fooled by the bright, wonderful cover. It's definitely a heavy kind of book. You're following the main character who at uh, her older sister got kidnapped and killed and raped. Definitely a trigger warning for rape. There's definitely a few mention of that in this book. But there's also great friendships, which I definitely appreciated. And there's a lot of feminist messages in there, which I just adore. So if you have this book on UTBR, but you haven't picked it up yet, I definitely recommend you do so. Next there is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chamber. This is actually a series. I don't know if it's two or three books. I have the second one. You're gonna see it in my next haul. I need to read it because this blew my mind. I was not expecting to like this book as much as I did. This is a YA sci-fi. It's a very character-driven book and it's a bit slow-paced, but it's not that slow-paced. There's still definitely some action going on. You're basically in the future where uh, humans are not like they don't consist of the majority of the like universe uh, population and you discover a few different uh, aliens and I don't know it was just really great since it's so character driven you can't say that much about it but definitely recommend uh, if you want like a feel-good type of book again something that was full of friendships and I just really enjoyed it so obviously if it's making it to my top five <laughs> next I have two like didn't quite make it to my top five but I wanted to give them a special shout out the first one I'm surprised it didn't make it to my top five but after reading it it's not that I was disappointed, it's just that I feel like it wasn't as good as the two of the books before that. And it is the third book in the Shade of Magic trilogy. This one is The Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. And don't get me wrong, it was definitely a great book. I read it so quickly. And it's a pretty big book. There's like 600 pages, I believe. 624. And I love her books because they have short chapters. You can like go through them so quickly. I can't say too much review wise because it is the third book. But in this universe, you're following four different Londons. Uh, one of them, the Grey London, doesn't have any magic. There's the Black London that is basically shut off because the magic basically killed everything. And then there's the White and Red London that do have magic. And then you're following two main characters. One is a magician that can travel between the worlds. And then there is a young orphan who wants to become a pirate. Even though I did enjoy the series and it's still like, I would mention this as my favorite, one of my favorite uh, fantasy series. I don't know, I really felt like the, the ending was kind of just disappointing. I feel like there was like characters that weren't needed in here. And then uh, the main female character was just so one dimensional. Like I was, I don't know, I, I was kind of disappointed. I believe I still gave it like a four stars. I still loved it, but I expected a bit more from this. I still wanted to give it a shout out because that series is definitely something that you should read. And like the covers of the whole series are just so pretty. So yeah. <laughs> then last book that didn't quite make it to my top five, but I still wanted to give it a special shout out is this book, The First 15 Lives of Airy August by Claire North. And I love that whole trope of someone dies and then they relive your, their lives. And this is definitely uh, one of the books I would recommend. It is, I don't, is it YA? Maybe not. It might be adult, but you're following Harry August as he lives his life. And I believe around the number 12, he uh, meets a young girl that tells him that the world is dying and he needs to fix it. But I feel like whenever I hear people say that, it doesn't do this book justice. So I want to say a little bit more, but if you want like zero, zero spoiler, I would just stop the video right here but what I'm about to say I don't feel like it takes anything away from the book I feel like it would just give you a better idea what it's about so not only are you following Harry August throughout his life he meets other people that ends up being like him so he's not alone but then there's one of those people that he becomes friend but that friend decides to basically change things and then that ends up killing people in the future people like him when they are not born once they just disappear so I feel like this gives a little bit more justice what uh, this book is about and there's definitely a lot more thriller part in there that I thought that, that I was expecting, but I enjoyed it. Uh, I believe I gave it also four stars. For me, four stars, by the way, is really high, so just 
throwing that out there. But yeah, definitely an interesting read and it made me want to read like basically all the books that are about people reliving their lives. So yay! So those were my favorite books that I've read this spring. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what were your favorite books this spring or if you have any opinions about these books. I always love to discuss them. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye!